I'm in the middle of the build and I have stopped um, want to show you some things and a couple things that I've encountered and I'll start with this this is uh, a problem that I came across and then I'll go to the schematics and then I'll show you some of the hardware and what I've, what I've been up to as far as soldering wires and connecting everything up but the first thing I want to show you is that the schematics that I have for you were designed for um, this particular RJ45 and um, I use the and I think it might focus no it's not I use this top top row this top row right here which is a they they, they have an a color a, a color scheme a and a, co a color um, scheme B or and so most networkers I'm told use B but anyhow this is the layout the RJ45 and I laid my schematic out accordingly when you look at my schematic go with the colors for the wires themselves on the hardware side of, of, of this but whatever you order as far as the RJ45s put the wires the correct color wires in with the wherever the A is at least that's what I used on this project in other words like if, if it's a blue and white wire you would put it here and go into this if it's a blue solid wire solid blue wire it'd go here uh, blue uh, brown and white wire would go here on this jack and a brown wire would go here and the corresponding colors as well on this side now here's what I discovered I ran out of these jacks because I used them in some other projects and I only built half of my pan and tilt because I had two cameras and I only did one. I wanted to make sure it worked fine. I have been doing it for about three months. I did another, went on to another project and came back. So I needed to order some more. I assumed that, you know, all things being equal, that these things would all be basically designed the same from the different companies. And I just got on eBay and, and clicked on, you know, um, these RJ45s and ordered some more well guess what they're not all the same so all I'm trying to say like on this one which is what I'm wiring my second pan and tilt camera apparatus up with on this one uh, things are a little bit different when I get to the RJ45s on my schematic I'm still going to use whatever the color you know the the scheme is for a for the for the a but I'll match my wires to where these go because what they do is they take these pins and they they put them in so that they'll work with your cat 5 um, wires because those are all always the same but on this end the different companies wire it up uh, I don't know if you can see it but there's a little little microchip board in here in the center and um, yeah sort of and so they send those wires so that they work out wherever they need to and you just need to know what color to put them in so when you're wiring in my schematic always go by the A for this project and that's where I started was in, in the A always go by the A and where you when you put your colors in so that they match in other words you you know you'll not cross them up as far as brown won't go in blue and blue won't go in brown or brown and white so you just match them up whatever whatever the company says you need to when you need to punch the wire down in then then go according to what the company says needed to share that with you let me let me show you the schematics and then we'll look at a couple of the pieces of the hardware so I need to come to my desktop and I need to pull up the schematics these are the schematics these are you're looking at the schematics for three pieces of hardware one is the pencil box or the Arduino board that holds my joystick that's what all of this is the joist the PlayStation 2 joystick which is in the top of the pencil box the Arduino board um, these pink everywhere you see pink those are the RJ 45s that come out of that device or uh, feed into the device whatever the case may be this is this happens to be the out um, so this is the schematics for it from your PlayStation you will take your in, in the PlayStation um, on on the 
card itself, it will have an indicated ground, 5 volt, X, Y, and then SW will be this one. That's for a switch. I don't, I didn't employ the switch, um, but I have, uh, it's just a, it's a 5 pin joystick. It's, it's all a uh, five pin some some have the six the six pins and you have to work out each side but anyways what i've sent you to is a five pin this is how you wire it this is the ground and the ground is always the green in this project the green wire for cat five the cat five is going everywhere is the ground or the negative and then um, so the green wire as you can see will come out of my joystick and go over to my arduino board and go into the ground uh, in the header pin the next one is the power, uh, the, the positive or the power, it's the 5 volt coming out of the Arduino board, going to the joystick, it will uh, come out of that pin, and uh, the 5 volt pin, and come over, and it comes to that second pin, which is an orange wire, and it gets soldered to the 5 volt pin. The X pin, you solder... Um, you bring it over and it feeds into the Arduino board, uh, Arduino board, and the X pin is the white brown wire. And then, of course, the Y pin is the only one left. Then coming out of the joystick, and it's going to be the white blue. Those actually correspond because when you get onto the servo motors, I used blue uh, for my signals from you know from the joystick. I used blue and brown. So on the joystick, I just used the white brown and the white blue, and uh, for the X and Y, so that they so that they correspond. Um, and so this is the analog side. Your your joystick goes into the analog side, and then you'll see the header pin split up on the Arduino board, and you have your power on that analog side, your power and your ground um, pins as well. Over on the digital side, there's actually 13 pins uh, in the header board that you can use. I've designed this to go with uh, pin, uh, and by the way, on the, let me back up here, on the analog side, I use pin 1 for my X and pin 0, it will say 0 on the, on the Arduino board uh, for my Y. And 0 is blue, or white blue, and X is white brown, but it's pin 1, X is pin 1 on the Arduino, Arduino board. And then going out on the digital side, and this side is the digital side, I use for my Y, I use the digital 10 pin, and for my X, I use digital 9. And I sent that out uh, with uh, the digital uh, 9, or my X is, is brown, and I just took it to my RJ45, and put it, punched it down into the brown. Just took my brown wire, then coming out of my Arduino board and punched down on the brown, and then on in the RJ45. And this is the RJ45 that's in the pencil box, coming out of the back of the pencil box, that's going to go and feed to um, my, actually eventually get to my cameras um, for my pan and tilt. And so coming out of that, then I have coming out the digital side of the board, come over to the blue and punched it down. Coming off the analog side, I picked up the green. Okay, now remember, I'm not I'm not going to send power out of the Arduino board to the to the cameras. I do send it to the joystick uh, because you need power there. And so the orange feeds only over to the five volt on the joystick. But I don't send power out of the Arduino board to the servos. I'm going to power them closer to the to where the servos actually are. And so all I need is is I need to hook up the ground and so I bring out the green out of that green pin or the ground pin not green but ground pin on the uh, analog side of that Arduino board and I feed it up to the to the green on the RJ45 and that one also gets sent out and actually there's two um, and you can do it this way. You can splice the green wire into the one ground. But there's actually two. I, found, I discovered there's two gr green um, or grounds in the Arduino board. And so for my joystick, I just went out of the other ground, and it was that way I didn't have to solder a splice into the into the ground line, uh, and just use the other ground pin. Uh, but you can splice them. Either either way will work. You just got to get all the grounds matched up. All the, to all the pieces, you have to have the same ground. All the grounds have to come together. Now, that's that piece and the hardware, and I just, I just run out of the RJ45. There's a CAT 
There's it's actually about 115 foot of it, or maybe more, of Cat 5 cable that, that drapes around my sanctuary and comes up to the front, and it goes into what I call the servo power box, and it comes in right here into this into this RJ45, and I have it wired up in the power box. I'll show you the power box. Let's see if I can. I like this. I didn't even think about doing it. I'll show you the power box uh, in a minute, the actual power box and how it's wired. But this is how I wire it. Coming in, then, for, uh, this RJ45, this this is the brown wire. It feeds out, up, and around. And by the way, I did this um, I did this with my Photoshop. I don't have a program that actually let me do wiring. So um, I just... I just kind of stopped where things cross over. They don't get spliced into. These are actually crossovers, um, and I just, you know, you just go over top. Um, so this brown wire is coming over, and it just comes, and it simply feeds. There's no splicing. It simply feeds to the brown on the uh, RJ45 for the servo out. So that's the that's the brown wire. Same way with the blue wires. These don't get these two wires on this side do not get spliced. They just come over and they feed into the other 45. Those are coming from your PlayStation switch and they're sending the signal, the digital signal uh, for the for those servos. So they they go in there's nothing spliced into them. Now, coming on the other side, you have the the ground or the green. This is green coming out, but it's going to be the ground and I pick up the uh, the black wire that comes out of my battery box, I splice into the green, and uh, I bring it out. I also splice in, I add a wire, a green and white wire, because I need the ground to go to both servos. I have two, when I get to the servos, I have two servo motors, and so I need the ground to both of them. And so I pick up with the black wire, my greens come across, I splice my black wire into the green and I splice a green and white wire into the green, bring it on out, and then I punch them down the green, then gets punched down, which is a ground, gets punched down on the green, the green and white gets punched down on the green and white, it's also a ground, it's just I spliced in, and the reason I use two different colors is so that I, I know which one's going where, um, that's just the way I did it. The same goes for your hot wire. When we come out, uh, there's no orange feeding. Remember, we didn't need to send from the Arduino board a, a hot wire. So we're going to pick our power wire up, which is the plus, which is the red wire, out of your battery box. I bring it in. I bring it down into the box. I feed it into the box, and I splice into an or into the uh, uh, I splice onto it an orange and an orange and white. Um, these are the powers I'm going to send to my my both servo. I need to power both servo motors. So orange is my my plus, and orange and white is my plus to the other one. So I just splice in, and I and that way I can do this with a Cat Five. You have to have you know you have to have it so that you're sending those wires in. And I like using so I know which one's which, and uh, the white orange is also a power, and so I pick it up. And, I, and you just put your white orange, then you punch it down into your RJ45 according to where the white orange goes and according to the orange according to where the orange goes and it's spliced into the red line which will feed your plus coming in. And then we get to, forgive, forgive that, that's a program I have going on. Uh, then we get to our servo motors and um, that apparatus. Uh, this box sets down at the, at the base and I just run a cat five out from here, from this side, up the pole and onto the the base of the of the pan and tilt. And it comes in it comes in right here into my RJ forty five and in uh, my RJ forty fives I build a pigtail for these wires and I wire up then my servo motors out of my RJ forty five. And so you send your brown uh, to servo, uh, your brown goes to servo two. It's the X for ser servo two. You send your blue up to the Y for servo one, and it operates, sends a signal. When you move that joystick, then your X and Ys are moving one servo or the other. Okay, and so to servo one. Then I take my ground, which is the green wire. I come out and I I then solder it to. Um, the, this green pin right here on my pigtail, it will go to servo one, and then I have, um, I, I also have my orange 
then comes out and hits the, always the center pin, your hot pin, it's the plus pin, it's the hot pin, um, with, or the power pin. The orange comes out and goes to uh, from the orange and hooks up to servo one. Then on servo two, I, I have the the white and green, Still, it's still a ground, white and green's coming off of this uh, RJ45 white and green. My white orange, which is that plus again, the, the, the white green is the negative, the, the white orange is the plus um, power side, and, and it comes off the white orange there from my RJ45. And then, of course, I've already told you that the brown comes off the brown for servo two. And so this is the schematics for all three pieces and how they work in the wiring diagram. And I and you can email me, I think, for this, and I'll send you this. This is actually a picture. It's a JPEG, and I'll send it to you. I printed it out so I'd have it when I'm doing my soldering. It's nice to refer to, and uh, it will help you, I think. Um, notice that I don't send all the wires out. I just send what I need to send out. And the cap five, if it's not hooked up, it you know it's just a dead wire in there. But then I'm, it sends it, and I can use whatever wires I need. So that's the schematics. Let me move to. Let me move um, back then and just show you the pieces. This is, and you'll recognize this. This is where I'm at with wiring up my um, pan and tilt this is the pan and tilt let me let me back <coughs> back out of this this is a little too close um let me back up just a little bit i zoomed that in for those rj45s let me back up just a little bit okay there we go this is the pan and tilt it of course pans and it of course tilts we've been through this you see here I have the RJ45 glued in and uh, what I have left to do for this piece is I've got to make it so that I hook up these two motors servo motors with these three pins there's three wires here this one uh, my last one had orange what did it have it had orange brown and black I think it was um, or anyhow they had different colors servo motors don't always have this this red red black and white uh, the center pin is always the hot pin I can tell you that and uh, <coughs> so I've got us I've got to now send hook my two servos up and, and for the wires for that what I did <clears throat> what I did is I made myself a pigtail here it is I'm looking for it this is um, I've already soldered up those wires according to the schematics this is for one and this is for the other um, I don't know which yet until I plug them in and then if the wrong one, if the X is running the wrong one, then I'll just, I just switch these wires around. I just take this one then and switch it, put, put it in here instead. Um, or you can put it in and, and test it and say, oh, that's the wrong one and then just pop it in. Um, if you get these backwards, you just flip this around this way. You know, if your ground is not working, it's not working at all, then you just spin this around and you got it. Um, I've done... I've gone ahead and put on my shrink wrap onto this, but this is my pigtail, and this is the other end. And what I what I'll do with this is I'll just simply feed this through right right through here underneath. And yes, you know you you're probably asking yourself, will that interfere with the 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 bolt that comes up in the nut? And and yeah, it's cumbersome, but it'll be up out of the way uh, enough where I can get my fingers in there and hold the nut. This this isn't. You know, it's just a few ounces, so it's not like I've got to torque the nut down. I just got to get it snug, um, use a little wrench and get my quarter 20 snug. And so I bring this through this way. I will punch these wires in according to this jack where they go. Just I'll just put them in, all of them. I'll put them all in uh, just because. And um, I'll, then I'll just take these and wire these in and then this will get bolted on of course you've got to put your webcam on I'm using it to do this video this will get bolted to there but I just put this in punch these wires into the appropriate places and and then these get put on and this thing will be good to go it will that piece will be done um, this is the this is the piece and of course this this piece is at, on top of the of the light stand. Light stands, are, by the way, I think I probably already told you are about fourteen dollars. And I just put these on a light stand. They're seven foot. They can go up to seven foot. So you need to make sure you make your your cat five 
cable at least nine or ten feet so that you can go that distance whatever it is if you're putting this on the wall mounting it on the wall and that kind of thing then you may not need a long cat 5 make a short one but this is what i call then the um in the schematics this is called the servo power box and this is called the battery box on uh, this that's kind of duh but anyhow <laughs> you like that huh duh anyhow i have it bolted on as you can see i have it bolted on right here yeah you can see that i have that bolted on um and i just bolted it on i didn't bother with gluing this this on these are super glued in they'll do they do just fine and here's my my orange and my orange and white and my red they're all soldered together i will put a piece of heat shrink over that and i just haven't got to it yet this one i may, had to put it in beforehand but i have my green i fed what i did here is i just fed my green from here over to there uh, according to what these jacks call for and that's where the green comes out and then i just soldered on i spliced on i brought in my I brought in my black and I spliced my black into here and I spliced on a green and white and brought the green and white over here. So my black, my negatives feed my green and green and white. So I got my grounds. And of course this one's coming from the Arduino. So all the grounds now are hooked together. That's really important. You gotta get all the grounds together. Um, and then and then just as, as far as this goes, according to the schematics, you know, your blue and your brown, they just simply feed over to the blue. Uh, on this one and the, and the brown goes right here and so you just you just passing that on through you just had to pick up your orange um, your power and your plus and your negative from your power source which would be the four batteries that will eventually go in here the other thing I did is I, when I bolted this together I probably should point this out yep you can see it um, I bolted this this will actually set on the floor this way at the base of my stand um, sets on the I actually have it going this way. This is my on and off switch. I turn it off um, When there's no service and right before service starts I, I, I flip the switch on so that the batteries then are sending the power to my cam uh, my pan and tilt and So it, it sets this way. I, I put the battery down on purpose because that's the heavy part This is very light without the batteries and so this just sets then what what's at the foot of my light stand is just here and then I just run um, I just run out actually it's this end that runs out to to this piece here runs this one runs to that and this one this end here is being fed uh, by the 150 foot cable that comes from the back of my church where where the uh, PlayStation joystick is and that that controls all this let me show you that here in a second by the way while I'm doing it this is this is the hacksaw blade that I use to cut off these tabs and I use it to cut down on these and you I, I just take come down when I put these in I just come down with a hacksaw blade and then I just push them in work it back and forwards and they snap off for me uh, sometimes I take some sandpaper and clean off but this this gets it done um, just so you know I don't have it on a um, into a, uh, I just use the blade alone this is the pencil box you've seen this before and uh, I have my joystick is I've actually already wired my uh, my joystick um, I'll, I'll show you that wiring here in a minute I've already shown you on the schematics but I'll show it to you um, I have already glued in see my header pins come out for this this I have to put those back but it's nice they're in header pins and they just slide right in I've glued in my RJ45 I have not bolted in I have to do that yet I'm, I'm almost done with this project I just got to get everything in here now um, I have to bolt this down and um, I'll have to take the this end of my uh, this is my joystick I have soldered on as you can see already soldered on cut me about a five inch piece here of uh, cat 5 I've soldered on according uh, to the schematics I'll, I'll go over that again I've got it I've got a take this off solder these on to my header pins put the feed feed them in the appropriate places and then just put the pins that uh, punch downs that come into this board and this will be done um, I will to hold this up in here again all I did is I bolted this to the plate um, to this to this wall plate right here cost you about a dollar to get them and uh, I bolt these to to the wall plate, well, and then I take the wall plate and bolt it to the to the 
underside of this that the wall plate gets bolted up in here so that's what holds this in place so that when I take this you don't you know you're not pushing it down that kind of thing as you can see I have those bolted in and then I'll spray paint this all black once I'm done um, let me let me talk about something that you need to know to get things to fit <clears throat> in into these electronic circuit boards these are smaller. These are actually designed for number four uh, bolts and nuts. I had to go to the hardware store and buy these. These are um, these are number uh, 440s. This is a th by three eighths long. And then I bought the nuts as well for that. Um, these the the number fours will fit into these holes and into the Arduino holes. Um, just so you know, but for everything else, I used the. I just went down, you know, and just bought a, a box of the number six. This is, I'll show you here. I just buy nuts and bolts in bulk because they're so much cheaper. Um, the number six, I, do, I use the number six for everything, for everything else. These are the three quarter. Um, this is a screw, but these are the three quarter nuts and bolts, and this is how I do it. And I'll bolt these with number six. But when I'm when I'm dealing with these circuit boards, you got to get the number fours. If you don't know that, you need to know that. I told you I'd, sh I'd share this with you. Let me go over this real quick, and we'll we'll be done. Um, this is my ground. This pin. Let's see here. I don't know. If it won't focus. Focus. I don't. Okay. This this pin right here is my ground, which has my green wire. This is my this is marked plus five. It's got the orange wires you can see soldered on. This is my X, and I have the white and brown soldered to that pin. And this is my uh, Y pin, and I have the blue and white soldered to it. And then this is this SW, and it's the switch, which is the when you press down on this, it it does other functions. Um, but I'm not not engaging the switch. I don't need the switch. And then I just I'll cut this off and then I'll wire this into my Arduino board according um, So that's where I am. I felt like I needed to stop Before I put it all together had it all together so you could see this and then I'll show it to you once it's all together